Hello everyone, this video is dedicated to CAD and CA integration in P7. Basically there are two types of integration. The first one is the direct integration blocks for CAD, CAE and other software. For example, there are direct integration blocks for SOLIDWORKS, PTC Creo, Siemens NX, Compass 3D, ANSYS Workbench, Flow EFD and Excel. The other way of integration is the integration through external text files and the program block. In this video I'm going to showcase an integration of ANSYS Mechanical PDL through the program block and SOLIDWORKS through direct integration block. The workflow looks like this. First, the text block generates an input file for ANSYS Mechanical PDL. Then SOLIDWORKS direct integration block generates a CAD model and export it to ANSYS Mechanical PDL working directory. After that, program block generates an output file and another text block parses it and outputs the results. Let's proceed to P7. I will use one of the examples that comes together with the software. It's a rotating disk with uh, nine parameters that experience an inertial load. This example contains all the input files and projects that I need, so I'll proceed straight to the edit tab to create the workflow. First, I will need a text block. You can find it in the integration tab. Let's name it input APDL. Let's double click on the block to open it. Here we will need to input a file that will be updated each time for further transferring to mechanical PDL. Here we need to select the file origin as a project and then here we have the prepared APDL input template. Let's open it and then let's push OK to close the menu. Here we have an APDL file that contains all the needed comments for mechanical APDL. Here we can define the input parameters, for example uh, the radiuses, let's call it R1. R6 and T3. Okay. Then we will need a SOLIDWORKS block. We'll call it CAD model. Let's double click on the block to open it. Here we have the pretty much the same menu that we need to input a project file in. Let's select a file origin project, then define the path. I have the prepared earlier SOLIDWORKS project. Let's open it. Okay. After that we need to retrieve the project tree. Let's click this button. Here we have all the parameters that I used in the in the SOLIDWORKS project. Here we can define the inputs. For example, R1, R6 and T3. Let's rename it for the sake of synchronization. This will be the, the R1, R6 and T3. We can also define an output parameter, for example, mass. After that, we need to export a CAD model from this project. Here we have an export file tab. Let's open it. This will be also a project. We will export this CAD model in Parasolid and name it Rotating Disk. Okay, and also we must define this model as an output file. Okay, after that we need to add a program block that will run ANSYS Mechanical PDL. Let's call it ANSYS MAPDL. Let's double click to open it. Here we, we must define the, the path to the executable. I have it prepared. 
So you, you can define any path you need. After that, we must define the ports to this block. We need an input port for the text file. Also, we need another input port for our CAD model and an output file for results. Let's add port names. First one will be an input. The second one will be our model. And the output. This must be defined as an output. After that, we must add arguments to the command line. First of all, we must define an ANSYS run as a batch one. This command is called B. After that, we must define an input file for the run. The argument is I. And since we have a parameter here, we can add it as a variable. So the file will be added to the argument automatically. And also we need to define an output. We can do it the same way by defining the variable. We also must define the file name for the model. Here we must define the, the name. So it should be the same as we saved in the SOLIDWORKS block. So it will be the rotating disk dot xt, the parasolid file. Let's push OK. Then we need another text block to parse the results from mechanical BDL. Let's call it results. Let's double click to open it. Here we need to have a template from one of the mechanical runs. So we need to do it before the integration, before the setting up the workflow. I have it prepared here. This is the output from mechanical run. In this output, we can find uh, one of the parameters, for example, the maximum stress. We defined it in the input file as a parameter max stress, the equivalent stress. Here we have the, the value. We must call it stress and define it as an output by clicking the read value. Let's push OK to close the menu. After we have all set up, we must define the links between the blocks. Let's do it by dragging the text block to the program block for transferring the input file. OK. Then let's drag the SOLIDWORKS block to the program block to export the CAD model. Here we need to link the export port with the model port. OK. After that, we need to drag program block to the results block, the output with an input. OK. And after that, we need to uplink the, all the blocks with the input and output parameters of the workflow. To do this, we can use the uplink tool. Here we can select all the parameters we need. For example, the R1, R6, T3 from the CAD model. R1, R6, T3 from the input APDL block the stress from the results and the mass from the CAD model. Let's push the uplink button and then OK. All the links set up and the workflow is ready to run. Let's then proceed to the run tab. Here we have the input parameters that we defined. We have the R1, R6 and T3. They're suitable for the text block and the solid word because they have the same names and we have the mass and the stress as an output parameters. Let's define the values for the inputs.
and let's push the run workflow button to get the output results. When the workflow is finished, we have the output parameters mass and stress. So this concludes the setting up the workflow of CAD and CAE integration. It can be then used in any optimization or design space exploration studies. It can be added to a composite block to run in parallel or pretty much in any way to define a more complex workflow. Of course, to do this you need a SOLIDWORKS and ANSYS installed on your computer. Without the programs itself the workflow would not run, so you need the licenses and the software installed. The program block can be used for pretty much any software that uses the texts as an input and gives the text as an output. So this makes P7 a really flexible platform for integrating different solvers and software you have in your company. So I hope you liked the video. Thank you and goodbye.